What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2022 video. So if you're unaware, just a few days ago, uh, we actually had the Indianapolis Regional Tournament. Now, this is a tournament that I meant to go to, but I have been pretty busy. I'm going to be at um, Milwaukee Regional, so that's like the one I'm guaranteed to go to. Uh, however, this was a pretty interesting tournament like like just the, the representation of legendaries is something that we haven't seen so far uh and since the last three tournaments have been won by rinia sun uh this was surprising uh but i i do see why we ended up seeing absolutely no rinia sun in like top 32 uh, but before we get into that, if you guys enjoyed, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily VGC content, and answer my comment question of the day. What do you think about the rise of Reshiram? I'm a big Reshiram hater, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So, obviously, number one was uh, Stefan Mott. He actually won with a pretty established core. You know, we got Zacian, we got Kyogre, Incineroar, Rillaboom, uh, Grimmsnarl, and... Zapdos, like this is a team that you would see on the ladder quite a bit, uh, but you know, Stefan did great, played absolutely amazing, won the whole thing. Now, Jeremy Rodriguez, shout out to you. Uh, he actually, like him and uh, Leonard Kraft and who else, and Adrian Hurley, uh, were running a Calyrex and Reshiram duo that I've seen on the ladder a couple of times. Uh, I'm a big I'm a big Reshiram hater. I think Reshiram's just kind of bad, uh, but I can see where they're coming from with this. Calyrex Ice is one of the best Pokemon in the format, hands down. It has very little things that can just straight up answer it, but it loses to like the best Pokemon in the format, Zacian, when Trick Room isn't up. Like you need to be able to hit it first, and even then sometimes you can't get the KO depending on your item. Uh, and by running a Reshiram, like it's it's one of few Pokemon that straight up check Zacian. Uh, we sort of see that with with Palkia, like we see Calyrex Palkia quite a bit because uh, Palkia is able to usually one shot. Uh, a non bulky Zacian with uh, Max Quake if you're using the Life Orb set. Uh, but Reshiram has a unique niche in that it absolutely takes like nothing from Behemoth Blade, about as, you know, well, I mean, like nothing takes nothing from Behemoth Blade, but you get where I'm coming from. It takes very little from Behemoth Blade compared to other hits, and it doesn't mind a player off because it's a neutral hit, where with Palkia, you can actually get one shot by player off if you're not careful. Uh, the rest of the team is super bulky. We see an Incinera for Intimidate. We see Tapu Fini. I don't know if it had Heal Pulse or anything. I don't think it did. I missed watching a lot of the tournament. I just caught, you know, peaks here and there. Uh, and we have notably a Porygon 2. Porygon 2 is never a bad Pokemon in any format ever. I'm going to say that straight up. There is never going to be a format where Porygon 2 is not viable and or amazing. Uh, and it's always slept on. Uh, I think basically what happens is when Porygon 2 gets released into a format, uh, if there aren't a lot of breakers, everyone loves Porygon 2. If there are a lot of breakers, like, you know, Zacian or something, all of a sudden people don't like Porygon 2 for some reason, even though it's just as good as before, it just has a couple more ways that it can lose, it, it's still viable. Like, I don't know why people drop it like it's, like it's just bad, uh, but yeah, like it, it's got so many good options, it's got foul play, it's got bolt beam coverage recover trick room so many good things uh but this team i i believe it was an assault vest on the rusher and when i watched i didn't see a life orb proc and i don't know what else you would run on that if it wasn't assault vest uh, but yeah, so basically Reshiram is able to deal with Zacian for uh, the Calyrex you're able to hit it with like a max flare or whatever uh just generally speaking it's able to hit very hard while still being very bulky like Reshiram is not a pokemon that has very little bulk you look at it, it's got 100 HP, 120 attack, ignore that I guess, uh, 100 defense and 120 special defense. It's very bulky. If you slap an assault vest on that, it you know it's even bulkier. And with Turbo Blaze, you're able to one-shot things like Mimikyu, uh, or not one-shot, but come very close I would assume, uh, and hit it through Disguise. So that's a very useful ability, as well as you know if you're running Earth Power, you're going to be able to hit things like Bronzong despite their Levitate, and that's always great. So yeah, we see a couple of our Shiran teams in top 8, or in top 32. Um, and like I, like I said before, there's like almost no Rinia Sun-ish teams. We do see, uh, Austin Acosta using a Calyrex Shadow plus Groudon team, and it's sort of Rinia Sun-ish, but Rinia Sun's known for like Zacian and not Venusaur being on the team. Um, there was one more that I think is even closer. Where was it? Where was it? Here. Uh, no, that's Joe. Hi, Joe. Here it is. So this is like the closest thing we got to Rinya Sun. Uh, they drop, 
I, I forget what they drop. Uh, they drop Grim Snarl for Thunderous, I believe. Yeah, so usually there's like a, a Grim Snarl here. So yeah, that's just interesting. Uh, we didn't, we really didn't see much, but I think that the the legendary representation. While I'm not like a, a shill for diversity in Pokemon, you might think I am. Like I, you might think that because I use a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, then I'm like one of those dudes that's like, I hate when there are only like this many Pokemon that are viable. I think that if you can't use your favorite, you're, you're just kind of, you got to figure it out. You, you got to figure it out. Um, and it's your fault if you can't. <laughs> that, that's my stance on it. But um, I, I, the representation of this tournament was insane. Uh, I went through top 32 and just took a look at everything. So there are 17 Zacian. Wow, that seems high. If you've looked at previous tournaments, let me let me do this real quick. Hold on, that was the video. Um, where is it? So let's go back to Victory Road's homepage. If you look at previous tournaments, let's look at um, which one was like the one that like is just super super Arena Sunish. Uh, Liverpool. I was thinking Salt Lake. Yeah, so Salt Lake was where like you know everything kind of started this year. So. Look at this top 32. Dominated by Seal types, dominated by Zacian, dominated by Zacian Groudon. Like, the top 32 teams, I, I forget how many it was. I think it was in the 20s is how many had Zacian. Here, like, it, we're not even close to that. We're not even, we got 17. Like, that's, that's like super low for Zacian usage. Uh, we had 12 Kyogre because Zacian Kyogre is like a really nice combo, but Zacian also pairs with other things like Groudon. Uh, we had 7 Calyrex Ice, 7 Calyrex Shadow. 7 Groudon, 4 Eveltal, 4 Palkia, 3 Reshiram, 1 Lunala, and 1 Kyurem White. But we're going to pretend that Kyurem White doesn't exist because I hate it. Uh, but yeah, no, like that's that's an insane distribution. Like, yeah, Zacian's on like the higher end, but everything else not named Zacian, pretty equal until you get to like these very niche picks like the Reshiram, the Lunala, and the, and the Kyurem. Like, that, that's insane. Um, I, I find that super interesting. And it, it's usually the opposite. Of what happens uh, as we go forward in metagames, usually the diversity of teams tends to get lower and lower, and then you consolidate into like a few archetypes that everyone knows viable. Um, and that's you tend to see that more on tournaments than on the ladder. On the ladder, it doesn't really do that, uh, but on, in tournaments, you see that because people want to do well in tournaments and they see previous tournament results and they say, okay, this is what works. This is what doesn't work. I want to do well because I'm paying like $300 to fly out to this event and compete. Sometimes 500 if, you know, sometimes 600. Some people spend an insane amount of money to go play this game. I, I don't, I don't usually do that, but they spend a lot of money to go to this tournament. They want to do well, so they use what's good. What happened here, I think the lack of Rhinia Sun representation is everyone showed up to the tournament saying, oh, well, I mean, I don't want to lose to Rhinia Sun, so let's just play something that I know beats it. That's I, I said this when I was talking about like the Salt Lake City Regional, when I was talking about the other regional. It's going to reach a point where the team is so good that everyone... That, that it almost stops being good like it's still viable but like everyone's prepared to face it everyone knows what it does everyone like is aware of like the flowcharty nature of the team and they they're prepared for it uh and that's exactly what happened like we we look at this tournament and the team is just nowhere to be found uh and i, I always say that when someone's like man i hate that this team's dominant also there's an escavalier i didn't notice that i hate that this team's dominant i hate that i can't beat it i hate how it's everywhere i'm like give it like two three weeks a month tops right and that's exactly what happened it's insane like that's not to say that rinya sun isn't good anymore obviously it's still super super viable um it's just that in the tournament you might not see it as often also shout out nora you did great top 12 uh but yeah i that's just that's just insane anyways uh i'm done with my little rant about like the uh the diversity of the teams, uh, the representation of different things, and uh, the lack of, of Rainia Sun. Uh, I just found that so interesting that it's going in reverse. Like, we're, we saw no diversity at the beginning, diversity at the end. It's usually the exact opposite of that, so I have no idea what's going to happen. I think we might see sort of like a like an hourglass shape, so just, just follow my mouse here, right? <laughs> so, no diversity at the beginning. A lot of diversity right in the middle, and then as we get closer to Worlds, it's going to come back, and it's going to be like, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, we're going to see, like, something come out on top, and we're going to find out what the real best team is, because we all thought it was Rhinia Sun for the longest time, but uh, 
Apparently not. I don't know if that's true. It, it probably still is. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about teams that we see here. Uh, so Stefan Mott, obviously we see uh, Zacian Kyogre. Uh, this team I already talked about, super interesting. Uh, Alex Underhill, Gothitelle on Palkia and Calyrex is such a cool adaptation. Uh, a lot of the ways that you deal with Calyrex Ice is just by switching, right? Uh, and in the case of Incineroar, usually, usually you you don't like hard switch, you, or usually you have to hard switch. I mean, because Parting Shot will go after the Calyrex under Trick Room. So just removing that option, usually like Gothitelle is something that can trap in Incineroar because of that. But when you have a Calyrex in the field and a Palkia in the field, just to like pressure it into wanting to hard switch, removing that option is absolutely huge. So I thought that was a super cool adaptation. Uh, we see something close to Arena Sun, uh, but with the Calyrex Shadow, uh, it, it, it functions pretty similarly, but I, I would say this one's a little bit more offensive where Arena Sun is a little bit more defensive. Uh, take a shot every time I say Arena Sun. Uh, we see Calyrex Kyogre, which is something that you don't typically see, but when you do see it, you do, you do see like um, Whimsicott and Regieleki and some hyper offensive nature to it. Uh, Paul Ruiz, former world champion. Uh, we see just a super reliable uh, Zacian Kyogre team. Uh, once again, Leonard Kraft running the very cool new Trick Room team with uh, Reshiram. Uh, more Zacian Kyogre, uh, more Reshiram. This one actually has an Urshifu. I would assume that's dark. Urshifu water just isn't that great. It could be water though. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't see this team uh, at the tournament, and there's not much info available right now since it was just like a day or two ago. Uh, but yeah, uh, this team just seems like a little bit more of an offensive version of the uh, Trick Room team. We see a Galarian Darmanitan. I don't know what it is about Galarian Darmanitan. It, it tends to show up in top 32 of tournaments despite uh, despite being not very meta, you know. Uh, but that's that's super interesting. Uh, we see a little bit of hyper offense. Uh, Zacian Calyrex Shadow, Zacian Calyrex Shadow. Uh, this one's got a Blastoise. Blastoise, I still think is super goaded in the format and very slept on. Uh, now that we're seeing less slug, now that the now that the live slug reaction is not a deadpan stare at your max move, uh, we're gonna probably see more Blastoise again, I think. Uh, but yeah, here we have Joe. You know, old ways die hard. Still got top thirteen though. Uh, he's got uh, Eveltal and Groudon. Let's. Just, you know, it, it, it's just so funny to see that Joe placed right next to his arch nemesis, Kurum White. But yeah. And when, of course, when you see Kurum White, what do you expect? Hyper offense. We got Calyrex Shadow plus, uh, I, I feel like, I always say this, uh, Talonflame is like the sort of Pokemon that's never going to be like outright bad. It's just going to be outclassed by a lot of things. But in this situation, in this situation, if you're already running just like Kurum White hyper offense, go ahead, run a Talonflame for your Tailwind. Go off, you know? Uh, we see Eveldog, uh, we see Zacian Kyogre, uh, I'm mostly just looking for like some standout stuff here. All right, so this one's interesting. Uh, Aaron Clemens, uh, we see Calyrex Shadow, Kyogre, and notably Weezing. Now, why is Weezing here? Well, as I stated before, the live slug reaction to water type moves is just a stare like, oh yeah, I got stronger. Uh, but Weezing is something that a lot of people have been looking into as a way to basically just get around that especially if you're running Kyogre it's super valuable being able to go for um max water moves against Groudon without having to worry about uh Storm Drain that's always very nice and of course if you're going to be running it next to anything Calyrex Shadow's ability is completely unaffected by neutralizing gas so it doesn't care and that's super cool so like that's why you tend to see these two together uh but yeah uh pretty hyper offensive I'm assuming Weezing carried its weight on this team uh, this is the closest thing to Rhenia Sun that we had. We already know what it does. And yeah, as we get further and further into uh, top 32, uh, we see a Lunaldon team. Now, Lunaldon is a tried and true archetype. Very slept on, in my opinion. Uh, I think the worse that Eveltal gets, the better this archetype gets. Uh, since Lunala is able to eat like at least one hit from literally everything in the game. Uh, and that's always super nice. Uh, being able to set up Trick Room, for uh, ground on being able to go for those meteor beams on Incineroar that would usually check it, uh, but now you get one shot is always very exciting. Uh, and yeah, I just think it's very solid. I don't think we're ever gonna find a format where this is just gonna be outright bad, but uh, for now, still pretty good. Daniel Thorpe here running the Escavalier team. Uh, interesting to see a Scavalier with absolutely no Trick Room. None of these Pokemon have access to Trick Room. So I'd assume that a Scavalier was here. Also, it's dual weather, like that's insane. Actually, let's take a look. I just realized that here it is. Okay, so we see 
Choice banded ground. Oh, wait, this is insane. Hold on. What did I just open? Uh, what did I just open here? Safety goggles, prankster, thunderous, uh, shookaberry, incineroar with throw shot, partner shot, flare blitz, fake out. Leftovers, Kyogre, Calm Mind, Origin Pulse, Blizzard, Assault. Va what is this? This is insane. Then Akaberry, Scavalier. Okay. So, what I was going to say, this just seems like a dual weather team, but like you don't want to lose to Cal or you don't want to lose to Calyrex Ice, so you threw the Scavalier on there. But this is a rabbit hole. What is this? This is insane. Just, I, I, you just don't tend to see these two together anymore, let alone Choice Band Groudon with Blizzard Combine Kyogre. Like, that, that's really cool. Uh, usually, if you're running Blizzard, it's just for the stronger max move. Um, it doesn't really, it's not really accurate otherwise. So, yeah. Um, we see Lugia in top 32. John Who can make anything work. I, I'm, I think Lugia is bad, but John Who's piloting it, he can make anything work. Uh, we see Z running uh evil dog you know we already know that's good uh a lot of uh standardish teams up here as we get higher and higher and i'm going to cut it off at top 32 uh we see calyrex and palkia again another very reliable team oh wait no here's rinia son 31st found it like this is like the exact team yeah okay so that, that's the other one so that's pretty interesting yeah uh overall i think this is a very exciting tournament i i didn't get to watch it live i was i was busy moving out and graduating and stuff so uh i'm gonna catch up i'm gonna watch this tournament on uh, the next couple of days while i'm like cleaning my my room and like unpacking all my stuff but yeah just just overall like the overview of the tournament this was pretty interesting and i'm excited to see what the format has to offer going forward uh there's a lot of weird stuff that happened this time around but you know let's let's see what's uh what's on the horizon for uh not Minneapolis, Milwaukee. I believe that's the next one. I don't know when it is, but I'm going. <laughs> I should probably uh, look into that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Sorry if I sound a little bit congested. I am sick. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I uh, will see you guys in the next one. Bye.